so the last vlog was about going through the Corinth Canal and a visit to Epidavros and how we um, arrived in Aegina to leave the boat there while I went back to England with the children. So this vlog is about Woody's adventures in Aegina looking after the boat and all the maintenance that he did and our trip in Athens coming back from England and um, also um, leaving Aegina. So as most of this vlog is about Woody's experiences, I'm going to hand over to him so you get to hear Woody talking for a change. You and me, we're family The bond that we share is as deep as the sea No matter how rough things may come to be You and me, we're family Sing home, hey long for the ride oh, hey I'll stay by your side As anybody who's got kids knows, it's not the easiest thing to kind of do any maintenance with kids around. Sometimes you'll start working with a tool, put it down, turn around and it's gone and then you'll find it's part of a space station or it's part of uh, a submarine or something like that. It's great that kids have kind of got such a furtive imagination, but obviously it slows the maintenance work down quite a lot. The other thing is they're, they're quite naturally curious about what you're doing. And I love the fact they're curious and they're learning all the time. But when you have a lot of maintenance to do, it's kind of good just to crack on um, and get up at seven o'clock and finish at nine o'clock at night um, and you just quadruple your production time. The other good thing is uh, I actually could make a cup of tea and finish it in one sitting without having to make a cup of tea in the morning and still find I haven't finished it by the end of the day. Before we left the UK, I was lucky enough to win a, a competition where I won some cordless tools. It was a grinder, uh, a jigsaw, um, a drill. Um, and even though it was quite an effort to bring them out, I'm so glad I did because um, you can save so much money on making things yourself and repairing things. We had a massive list of jobs uh, that we needed to get to before we actually carried on from Regina. Um, we got the generator sorted out, which is great. Um, but the other thing is we had a, a few leaks um, and they were a bit hard to trace. So the first thing I wanted to do was clean up the engine and give it a paint. Then we had some uh, bilge pump issues. The pipes that lead to the bilge, which suck out all of the water, um, they were a bit uh, brittle and stiff and they weren't reaching right down to the bottom of the bilge. So I had to replace all those and the strum box on the end so it could get right down to the bottom. Um, Amels are quite unique boats in the, that they, the grey water goes into the bilge, which is housed in the keel. And so you've got the automatic bilge pump and the manual bilge pump which go into there and suck it all out. Um, and also if there's any leaks in the boat, it all channels into this one bilge. So it's an, it's an important part to, to keep maintained correctly and to be able to suck out water. And they need to be cleaned and maintained um, because that's the first sign of anything going wrong with the water system or with leaks. The pre-filter for the water maker was quite corroded. We'd ordered a few things in from the UK which had arrived in Greece but we hadn't had time to fit them yet. It was quite difficult designing because there was a mixture of imperial and, and metric fittings to go together. Um, I kinda, it did kind of help that um, in my previous life back in on land I did a lot of industrial style design furniture and I used a lot of pipes and fittings like that so it was kind of going back to the old job really, but actually doing it for practical purposes rather than uh, just aesthetic purposes. I did travel around the island a little bit and between various Greek holidays and strikes and strange opening hours I did manage to source everything I needed. So I've just cycled about five miles to this chandlery because I can't find any shops open in Aegina and uh, I've just been told that it's uh, strike day. Yeah, I can't buy anything today. So, back to the boat. I found a, a local plumbing shop run by this old guy. Um, 
obviously it's a captive market and I got ripped off, but um, he had a nice smile, so I kind of, uh, kind of made up for it. still haven't got round to kind of fully servicing the water maker yet but uh, that'll be the next job. Um, we'd noticed that the kids really like sitting on the front of the boat with their legs dangled over the edge watching the dolphins swim underneath and, and other things as well like just watching the jellyfish or turtles or even the barracuda and also it's quite difficult to get your own personal space in the boat and uh, one of the best places to sit in the bow of the boat because you can obviously see the horizon and um, have a bit of peace and quiet. Um, but at the moment, we've just got a framework there, and so it was, it was fairly safe. Uh, we always made sure they were clipped on, but there was no actual platform to sit on. So we kind of saw that as a bit of a safety issue. So I designed and made a seat for the kids, so all the kids could sit there. On a boat, you've got a kind of, your workshop is wherever you can make it, really. And um, if you're tied up to a key, your workshop becomes the quayside. Um, it's not ideal, but you've just got to make do on a, on a boat. and obviously you're going to be asked to leave so uh, I was always quite diligent at the end of the, the day to make sure that I'd cleaned up. In the Mediterranean um, parking is mainly stern two parking which means you drop your anchor about five well, three to five boat lengths out reverse into the key side and attach two stern lines to the key sounds easy enough but when you um, throw in other factors such as crosswinds such as prop walk and people basically not quite knowing what they're doing um, it makes for quite an entertaining spectacle so in between the jobs um, in between the maintenance um, I would go up and just basically keep an eye on our anchor and watch other people row as well. If the boat doesn't come back straight and uh, comes at a bit of an angle, then obviously you get your rudder caught on other people's anchor chains, you hit other boats, you can get blown off onto other boats, um, you can get your prop around other people's chains, um, and a relatively simple procedure can turn into a, a complete nightmare for everybody involved. Some people take it quite um, take it quite badly. Thank you. 
Mo all at the same time and you see a lot of people reversing, get perfectly straight, come in, get the stern lines attached and they forgot to put their anchor out. Um, you can't not have an anchor out. So the procedure is just to go out, drop your anchor and come back in again. However, um, some people do try and roll their anchor out, um, which once you've tried it once or twice, you realize that is not an ideal situation because the weight of the anchor chain pulls you back. Um, it's quite funny to watch um, that happen. small place and you get some flotilla boats coming in and there's no space. Now when Arenka and I were flotilla skippers we used to raft up which is fine as long as you've got everybody's consent it's very easy to raft up and you can double up boats you can triple we've even had quadruple boats doubled up from the quayside but you need somebody to coordinate that. When boats just suddenly decided they're going to raft up without anybody's consent then that just leads on to a whole new level of chaos. Um, and we had this several times with uh, a Ukrainian flotilla who just decided they were going to come in, drop their anchors on everybody else's anchors and tie up to everybody's boat and then use everybody else's boat as a pass rail to get to shore. So this Ukrainian business group has just turned up and it's caused an absolute mayhem. They've crossed everybody's anchor. So the drinking started already and uh, the boats aren't even tied up yet. So we've now got a, a wall of Ukrainian boats blockading the harbour. There's a lot of very unhappy people here. I don't think we're going to get much sleep tonight because the bottles are already out. A lot of glamorous girls everywhere as well. So, so one of the guys jumped on our boat and proceeded to do locking turns on the cleats and I kind of explained to him that I didn't like locking turns but his English wasn't that good so imagine trying to do hand gestures to explain to a Ukrainian the reason that you don't use locking turns it's crazy so it's two o'clock in the morning you've got the Ukrainian male voice choir going on outside the boat so it's early morning and um, it's all very quiet around here but uh, two of the boats um, have managed to leave they managed to uh, get one of the Ukrainian boats to move um, and miraculously there's no crossed anchors this morning so I think we might be in the clear Again, it was, wasn't all about crossed anchors and uh, maintenance. Um, it is a nice island and I did get to ride around some of it on the bike. Um, I wish I could have seen a lot more, but the two weeks went by really quickly and then the family were due back in Athens. So I had to leave the boat and head to Athens to uh, meet them off the plane.
fortunately we know uh, a couple in Athens, um, uh, Ori and Mariella. Um, Ori we used to work with as uh, flotilla skippers a long time ago uh, with Nielsen and uh, he took a job there uh, working for Dream Yacht Charter and he's got a really nice flat in the middle of Athens um, away from the tourist area and so it was nice to see a bit of kind of um, modern Athenian culture. So um, our friends in Athens let us crash over which is really nice because it meant we didn't have to rush back to a um, Aegina, um, but it also meant we, we had a, about half a day to go and see some of the sites. So um, we thought oh, the, the obvious place to go was uh, Parthenon, but um, do, do you want to speak about that? Okay. Yeah? Okay. This is all the Acropolis, and the museum is here, but I'm not sure what it's by actually. This is the Acropolis Museum in Athens, and I like this because of the architecture. I just um, I like the sort of brutalism style. It reminds me of uh, Tate Modern in London. What does it remind you of? It reminds me of Tate Modern in London. I just like going there just for the architecture. I'm not that bothered about what's inside. I just like going for the architecture. Do you like architecture? I do like architecture. The amazing thing about the museum is that at the entrance of it you can actually see the ruins of the old city. Um, the Acropolis is actually this whole great big hill and um, no one actually lived up there, they all lived down there in the city and the Parthenon is the building inside the Acropolis at the top which we're going to go and find. This is the sanctuary of Dionysus, they used to do a um, dance to celebrate the god and this dance was a dance that was the nucleus of the Greek theatre apparently. So Dionysus is Woody's favourite god. Why is it your favourite god Woody? Because he's the god of wine and food. The god of wine and food and um, they've got a wall around here because they used to actually fill it with water and have sea battles. This is the beginning of the Parthenon and it's very busy. This is the old Temple of Athena behind and that is obviously the Parthenon. she doesn't have an immune system so she can't travel very far because if she does she gets really ill um, so we she let us have take a toy from her house so we took this one and because um, it's very unique and Erica's really unique so we take a picture of it in every um, place we go and then we send it to her to show that um, this Erica can actually travel anywhere because she's really um, up for everything. There was a city and it didn't have a name. So Poseidon and Athena, they both wanted to have the city as their own. So um, they were going to have a test and the people of the city would vote. So Poseidon made a well in the middle of the city and the people of the village drank it. But then it was salt water so nobody liked it. And then um, Athena, she planted an olive tree in the middle of the city and everyone tried the olives and they loved it. So that's why it's called Athens. I wish Poseidon could do it because he's my favourite Greek god. And um, I love him because he goes in the sea and like he has the whole underwater city, like an uh, underwater city, but just like with fish. And that's why I really like him and I want him to have the village. 
I've just checked so it's live. Parthenon, it was time to get back to Agena to get a ferry. So we walked down to the ferry terminal and um, got ourselves on the next ferry to Agena. We were quite relaxed really and um, yeah, thinking, oh, this is it, the final bit of our journey back to the boats. And um, but things are never that calm in our life and um, there was, there's always a drama. So our ferries turn round to go and um, we'll see if he's alright. Yeah, so someone discovered there was someone in the water, a person in the water. So we all started shouting and pointing and someone ran up to tell the skipper. So they turned the ferry round and um, managed to eventually get her into the boat with a lot of difficulty because obviously she would be in the water for a while she had no energy left she was cold and um, the ladder didn't go right into the water so she couldn't she didn't have the strength to even pull herself up and then um, yeah they brought her around eventually someone dived in with her and took her around to the back and they lowered the ramp that gets the boats in and they managed to finally get her on there and they dragged her in and then you know she was conscious and she was able to talk they, I think they got her details but um, you know, then they sort of decided to move her to another boat and um and then they whisked her back to the hospital hopefully but um yeah i think they were pretty good sort of helping to get her but um oh well hopefully she'll be all right we managed to edit a micro blog of that whole man aboard situation which actually made it into mainstream media so yeah you can see that on on the link children they've worked out that um, if they get their instruments out on the key side and play for people they can earn quite a bit of money so they've kind of got into this busking thing and um, they're earning some pocket money from doing it so it's a win-win situation really <laughs> In England, we had to try and encourage them to practice, but when they're out on the on the dock playing, they'll play for hours at a time. Right, so we had to change our MMSI number because if your boat is registered in a different country, you have to change your MMSI number, which sounds easy, but then you have to send your VHF unit back to somewhere that they can do that for you. So we had to detach our unit, which is down here, take all the wires out, and um, I took it back to UK, sent it to them, they changed the MMSI, they sent it back to me, now I've brought it back and we need to fix it together. And the other thing to make it more complicated is because we have AIS, we also had to check, send the, um, the AIS transponder back. So likewise, um, that also had to be detached, sent back. And um, so we kind of labeled everything because there were so many wires attached and now we've got to try and get it back together again. VHF. We've got to connect the two wires, haven't we? Like, we've yeah. got to connect a green wire to that brown one there. 
So when our um, VHF unit was sent back for the MMSI number to be changed, they also found another fault in the transceiver box, which they fixed. So it turned out to be quite an expensive um, operation. But that's maybe why our VHF broke down when we were going under the bridge. Um, so hopefully they sorted that one out. I mean, the other thing, the wires are all kind of, the black covering was all coming off and we thought maybe there was a bad connection there, but I've taped it all up. I think it's okay, actually. So after a couple of days, we um, went shopping, we provisioned the boat and um, we went to pay the final fees at the office. It's a lovely office, actually. It's kind of a bit colonial style and you get a great view of the harbour. So taking the children up there they not only kind of understand that we have to pay for these fees and they see the whole bigger picture but also you know they get to see what else is going on um, in the marina so there was like that ferry boat came in and then another living boat turned around and then came in um, and, and I don't know oh there yeah, there's a living boat the main things really that we had to stock up on was fresh fruit and vegetables really, not knowing you know, when we're going to get to in the next shop because we knew that our journey after that wasn't really going to be stopping in any major towns or anything. We're going to get strawberries. What we try and do is wash the fruit and veg before we um, bring it onto the boat because we're trying to avoid bringing on like bugs and maggots and all sorts of things like that. And this is what you should do with all the vegetables before you take them on the boat, okay? Yeah, what the olden day people do. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm, I'm washing Can you show me some? Yeah. These are all of the mini ones. Where? Here. And I will show you the uh, big one. Wow, that is bigger, isn't it? That's the biggest. That's like... Is that the biggest? That, yeah, I found Which it. one's bigger? Show me the big one and then show me the small one. Oh, wow. How two, does that compare? Is it twice the size? It's twice the size of two um, little ones. Wow. And and then the ones while rushing have maggots in, we throw them in, and I only saw one throw from that, so that means there's a maggot, and now they're trying over there. What are you guys doing? The final thing that we wanted to do before we left was put our new end sign up which we'd had got from um, UK. We got one made up, so yeah, we wanted to hoist that because we've had a re we haven't had one at all actually. What flag is it, Ewan? British. Yeah, it's the ensign, isn't it? Okay, so we've had the boat in Megina. I went back to the UK for a bit with the kids to sort out lots of things and um, so the boat was in Agena for a few weeks and we've left the dock again, it's nice to leave the dock and we're heading south. We think the furthest we'll get today is Poros and then tomorrow we'll probably do a slightly bigger hop across to the Cyclades island. So we're going to go down to the Cyclades. So when we left the children, the best thing was that the children um, got to try out the new seat. Oh, I might do it again, delete that. <laughs> it's like the um, Tate Modern in London. So it's 
full of shit, but it's, the, it's got a great building. <laughs> Quite funny to watch um, that happen. Try not to say um all the time. Um, so if they you're doing really well, otherwise. You know, are you eating the strawberries? What? Are you eating the strawberries? Eating cherries. Cherries. No. Tea with our tea bags from England. <laughs> you and me, we're family. No matter how far away we've grown to be, we travel on to unknown destinies. So thank you for watching these videos. If you like them, then please keep subscribing on the YouTube channel, uh, like us on Facebook and share with everybody. And also, if you want to, please do help support the creation, editing and um, producing of the videos. You can support us on Patreon um, to keep making these videos. Thank you. And if you want to do it, do it. Hey, long for the ride home. Hey, I'll stay by your side home. Hey, you'll always be.